Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to talk about a topic that we never had in 300 episodes on a podcast. And I think it's particularly important if you're a solopreneur, an entrepreneur, a startup founder to talk about its intellectual property and trademark laws. If you're not clued up when it comes to trademark laws and intellectual property, you might be in hot water relatively quickly, specifically if you just have started a business. And we want to find out what is the best way to deal with that and learn a little bit more about on how to put this in place into your business. With me on the show today, I have Guido Laredo. Guido is a Swiss Argentine attorney, attorney specializing in IP law, especially trademark law and with additional expertise in brand management. Guido has advised, advised luxury and sports industry clients on counterfeit issues, contract management and negotiations, as well as other event elaboration, commercialization and implementation. Guido's passion for brands and commitment to ongoing education led him to complete the Executive Master in Luxury Management at ESSEC Business School and SDA Bodoki School of Management. So let's welcome Guido to the show. Hi Guido, how are you today? Hello, Carl. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, flattering in introduction, and I'm very pleased and thankful to be in, in your show. Let's dive right into it. Trademark law, IP, copyrights, all of that is on a legal side, and a startup founder, a entrepreneur is not necessarily a lawyer, an attorney, or a well-versed when it comes to law. Now, both of these things are very, very important. I just give me an overview just to uh, a definition between the differences of IP and trademarks and copyrights so that people get an idea what we're talking about. Okay, sure. Uh, with pleasure. Well, uh, from the legal uh, side of uh, the things of, of trademarks, uh, you have to differentiate as you, as you, as you named it, between uh, trademark law and other IP laws like copyright law, patent law, uh, which are uh, covering uh, different uh, areas. Trademark law is the area where you want to to make sure that your brand is protected and not copied or used by 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 others uh, by certain people who are not authorized to use your brand. So that is uh, one area. Patents, uh, on the other hand, it depends on uh, which country. We, we are referring to, but patents uh, in Europe, for instance, um, and, and, and Switzerland also, uh, is uh, the protection of, of, uh, of uh, an invention uh, which is applicable uh, in, 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 in life. And um, so it's, it's, it's more on a scientific, uh, in a scientific area. And copyright is more about works and, and, and creations with a, a certain quality that uh, uh, you are the author of. So we, we are talking about uh, works of uh, literature, of music, uh, of, of, and other uh, arts. So um, the trademarks and brands are more to be situated into uh, in the commercial context. Huh? Are more uh, about protection of your of your identity, of your uh, of your company, and the, of course you want to 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 have it uh, that all the all the efforts you put into your into your uh, company and into your products and services, you want to make sure that uh, all the efforts are on your. Uh, on your plate and not getting used by 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 third parties. So that's uh, from the legal point of view, the the, the main idea of uh, brand uh, protection and trademark law. Mm -hmm. I think that was a very good explanation. And as you already mentioned, it's a kind of a two sided sword. It's your trademark, it's your invention. But on the other end, you don't want to misuse someone else's trademark intentionally or in it, unintentionally. Yes. Now, what do you see happen most with brands when they get started? Um, when they start to think about trademark, obviously you have to register a trademark first and that's a complicated process. What's the thought process behind that? How does that work? Okay, yes. Of course, uh, first of all, we, ha we have to we have to distinguish the the legal side 
and the brand management side of, of an initial uh, thought, huh? if you are a, a startup uh, company. From the legal side, you need to do some, some homework, some research, and uh, you need to know a bit uh, mm -hmm. what, what your, what your uh, story is, what your background is. Huh? So now we, we are shifting a bit into the, 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 the strategic brand management side of, of, this, uh, of this phase, of, of an initial phase. You need to think, uh, okay, where am I standing right now? What is my history? Where do I come from? And where do I want to, to evolve? So uh, this is uh, this is the point you need to be uh, you, you need to have uh, uh, clear and uh, you need to be you, you need to have some clearance about that what is what is uh, the promise my brands will carry my brand will carry eh? what is the quality I want to to deliver what is the identity I want to I want to display and uh, at the end of the day you want to have as much um congruency between your brand identity and the brand image you want to create in your uh, consumers and your clients heads so that is the, the 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 first point and then you need to be aware that once a client or a, a consumer buys um, or uses your your brand you you will come in uh, you become a, a community you you form a relationship uh, your consumer your uh, your uh, customer uh, appreciates the, the the reputation that your brand conveys he he values your brand and uh, he decides to be part of of, of that I mean, we understand that uh, very easily as an example. Uh, if you want to buy a new car, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it carries uh, different uh, layers, the, the, the decision making, huh? you, you, to which, to which uh, community, to which family you want to belong to and why. And uh, all this information is a bit uh, concentrated and conveyed and transported through through the brand and the legal part of it is you want you, you want to be the guardkeeper of all this uh, information you don't want anybody else to 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 get hold of eh? to, in german you would say to uh, to be trittbrett, trittbrett fahrer. in german mm -hmm. a free rider of your of your brand identity of your uh, of your ideas. No? So this is where these two areas, the legal part and the, the strategic brand management part come together. Mm -hmm. I think it was very important that you explained there is a, a branding size to it, a branding part to it, and there's a legal part to it. Then obviously, if you register a trademark, um, that's a long time marriage. It's not, you cannot change it every three months. So, and it's a complex process. So you want to make sure that the message to branding is right before you register your trademark. Now, the trademark register process, as far as I remember, is on a country-based level. Is that right? How does that work? That is, that is correct. Uh, the, the, the system is, uh, is on a territory, territorial principle based on that principle. However, there are some uh, multi, multinational uh, treaties the Paris of Verbandsübereinkunft, the Paris Treaty, the the, the, the the classification is also unified. The Nizza classification, so that helps if you if you want to expand your business into different uh, into different countries and markets. However, you need to be clear at the very beginning of your business. Okay, in which or which countries? Uh, I want to develop my business. Is it a national? Is it a national business? Is it an international business? On based on that uh, question and answer, you will register your your brand, your trademark in in, in those countries. Yeah? Of course, now we have uh, 
community brand, uh, community system, the EU brand, which uh, the, 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 the base is in Alicante in Spain. You can register a trademark there. Um, you can have a basis in, in one of those countries and then expand also to, to, other, to other countries. You can do that via the WIPO office in Geneva. And uh, yeah, most of the countries are uh, affiliated uh, with that uh, system. And from there, you can expand your, your brand and the protection of your brand to different uh, countries. Be aware that uh, the more countries, the more um, the more uh, the, the fee uh, the, the, the fee will uh, will cost you, of course. Mm -hmm. I think good point there. Uh, at what point do you think should a, a company um, really look into registering their trademark, their brand? Because as you said, it's, it can be quite labor intensive, time intensive, and at the end of the day, it, it can be quite costly to go through that process. So if you have just started your business and you're four weeks in and you have sold your first 10 products, it might be a little bit too early in, in, the, in the story of your business. What's what's the, the, the process there? When would you recommend to start looking into trademark registration? Yes. Okay, to answer your question, but let me let me let me answer that with a with an image or with a with a with a short story. If you are a hairdresser in a in a small village and the next village is like one hundred kilometers away. Do you need your brand and protect your brand uh, as a hairdresser or as a barber in that village? You are the only one and no, nobody else will enter your market. So probably there is no need uh, for you to, 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 to come up with a, with a fancy brand and even to protect your, to your brand because, uh, yeah, you are the only one uh, delivering that service. Huh? However, these days we all know uh, there is a huge, uh, huge amount of uh, of uh, services and 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 uh, products that more or less are in uh, competing with you, and uh, you want to make sure that uh, your service is recognized. Your your product uh, will distinguish itself from other products. So the answer to your question is, yeah, uh, if if you are in competition and uh, with with other uh, services and with other products, it's very uh, advisable, and I would recommend to 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 protect your brand in an early stage. And once you you decided, okay, now. I am I'm evolving. I am uh, addressing to to a certain public. Uh, now I want to protect it. And when you answer the question, in which country you are active, in which country you will be active, maybe in two to five uh, years, then you know which countries you are. You want to protect your brand, and certainly you need to you need to do some research. Are there once you came up with a with a name, uh, maybe a, also a logo. You need to do a research. Okay, is there any any other using a similar or, or, or similar name or, or or logo? You don't want you don't want to start with a with a with a legal issue that's not very advisable. And also from a, from a legal point of view, you might get into into trouble. Uh, after uh, your brand is uh, registered at the office, IPO office, the the older owner has uh, three months time to to file an opposition to your brand uh, deposition. So uh, you need to do some some legal uh, research, but also not only legal research, but also from a strategic point of view. You need to 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 answer the question. Okay, where is my service or where is my product placed in the market? Yeah. Yeah. Which consumers, which uh, buyers do I want to address? 
and uh, you need to also answer the question of, of, of your pricing. Of course, that goes hand in hand with the positioning. And where do you see your brand in the future? Where does it evolve? Again, we come back to the, the, the question of the countries you want to, to be active in. Huh? And yeah, these are the, 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 the main questions you need to answer for yourself as a startup uh, company or as a, as a uh, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Now with a trademark, obviously you pr protect yourself um, for getting sued, you build up your brand. And with that, you create an asset, you create a value, spe specifically if we want to sell your company at some point in time, um, having a trademark might be a huge asset that influences the sales price. What's, what's your take on um, how important is the trademark in trying to sell a business? Hmm. Again, if, if you allow, Carl, I, I'd like to come up with a, with a short story or a quote of a, of a, of a CEO of a, of a very uh, well-known and famous uh, company who was asked what is his most important asset is and and he he answered if i would have the choice of keeping all the all the manufacturing uh, devices all the fabrics uh, or the brand i would keep the brand the brand is far more important uh, with the brand he, he he said i can start all over again uh, i need to have investors but uh, i need to have uh, the, the people who 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 know how to how to to produce the, the 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 product but when you have the brand you have such an important asset because the the public knows your brand the public knows the quality of what you are you what you have done in the past and uh, it's it's um, it's it's like uh, condensed a condensed value and it also of course in an MA um, in an MA uh, procedure the brand is is, is uh, very often uh, very if not the most valuable asset uh, of, of a company so you better uh, you better uh, treat and and uh, protect and 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 lead your brand very carefully i like to see brands as as a person now yeah? it has a, a history it has a business history it has a, a present and it has a future and uh, the brand uh, needs to be guided it needs to be placed in the right uh, in, in the right market, in the right place, needs to have the the the, the congruent um, visibility, communication, and uh, if you if you if you respect all that, uh, your brand will become a very very valuable asset that protects you from from uh, unfriendly take takeovers, for instance, but also gives you a very strong uh, uh, negotiation position if you are in a in a in a M and A uh, transaction. Mm -hmm. Specifically in the e-commerce sector, companies tend to grow very very quickly if they're lucky, and then obviously a strong brand name that is registered um, will help a lot in finding a buyer. Now I want to have a look or talk about the other side. Um, you are running a business and unintentionally you violate the trademark of someone else unknowingly. That can happen. Just a, a simple wording might happen. Must not necessarily be a logo, and you get a letter from a lawyer. And um, what happens then? How do you react on that? Well, yes, it, it uh, can happen. It should not, but it can happen, of course. Well, you need to. We are now in a very specific case of a, of a of a of a so-called trademark infringement case. Huh? Uh, first of all, you need to 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 evaluate: uh, is this a a serious uh, case, or is it just somebody trying to 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 force you to to 
to do something or you are not you are not willing to or even to get money out of it so if it's if if it if it's uh, seriously based and there is like a similarity between the two involved bands brands or or if the 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 the, the, the third party is holder of a famous trademark and you are maybe using the the, the reputation or or uh, the, the, the 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 name and the, 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 the well known name and you want to profit of the of, of to have a publicity effect right then you you could be a, a willingly or unwillingly a free rider and you need to be very careful because the next well the next steps that or the threats that are in 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 the room right right here and right now for you is that uh, let's let's assume you you made some uh, investments in 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 your products in your presentation packaging uh, online uh, investments uh, of course the if if the third party has the stronger right the older rights and is holder of uh, of of a uh, a famous trademark, uh, uh, he can force you to 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 destroy destroy all all uh, packaging and all products and all activities that are similar or are infringing the reputation of his uh, trademark. So it's very important before you go out to the market or while you are uh, planning a new a new campaign to to make sure you are uh, within good rights and you are uh, uh, acting uh, in good faith and and also uh, within your own trademark rights and not infringing anybody else's uh, trademarks rights mm -hmm. they can become very seriously very quickly and if you have a bigger business there might be a lot of money involved and obviously you don't want to have your uh, products destroyed by simply not having your done done your homework in the first place now exactly. what i like on, on your profile you come from the law perspective but also from the branding perspective and that's a combination that's not around that often how do you help your clients through the process what steps are involved yes I like to 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 combine these two uh, areas. As a as a lawyer, as a trademark lawyer, you are, let's say, the guardian of your of your work, of your brand. Eh? You make sure that nobody else uses the the reputation, the the the, the name that that carries your brand. Eh? And on the other hand, as a, as a brand manager you can see yourself as an architect of the future of your brand huh? you are you help uh, your clients to, to that uh, their brand identity evolves that there is a, an evolution but maybe you want to 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 make a, a brand extension huh? uh, maybe product line extension or maybe to enter new markets huh? With your existing background, uh, so uh, that's that's my role. I'll, I am very passionate about it. I I, I, I like it very much. Um, I like also the fact that I'm not limited only to the legal protection, to be the guardian, but also to be an architect of of a, of a brand to make sure that all efforts and all uh, communication activities are aligned with your brand identity and with your goals and with your goals and with the the actual actual uh, position and the actual um, goals of your of your brands so i i try to, to for the benefit uh, of 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 my clients and my uh, contacts to 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 combine these two areas Mm -hmm. Who's your perfect customer? So what kind of industries or niches or verticals are you working with? 
Yeah, well, in the past, uh, I had uh, contacts with the, the Swiss um, watchmaking industry, which is a very fascinating uh, industry. Uh, and they're mainly in the legal protection, so counterfeiting and, and piracy issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, in the last years, I did some uh, additional uh, training and, and formation in, in, in brand management and there, in, especially in the luxury um, luxury brand management. So if I say luxury, it's it's not necessarily my ideal client, let's say it, or the client it doesn't need to be in the luxury segment. Because if we talk about luxury brand management, it's it's like talking about a certain technique. We all know the cues before these famous brands, the people that don't care how much it costs, and and uh, they they simply want to be to have that product and to be part of of that and to because of course there is an image transfer to the holder of a certain bag or, or a certain watch. Huh? We all we are all aware of that and uh, this scarcity and and this. Uh, ethos and, and image that comes back to the to the buyer, right? And this is a result of, of a lot of, of work and uh, a lot of history. And you can as a as a as a as a, as a non not not being a luxury product, you can adopt certain techniques so that your product or your service is is uh, is considered very 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 valuable. So you can you can adopt uh, certain techniques to 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 enhance to to evaluate to to evaluate, to, uh, evaluate uh, your your product or or service huh? to to make it in in the eyes of your consumer more valuable. So that's uh, the whole idea behind it. So it's not necessarily the customer that needs to be from the luxury sector, but it's to learn and to apply certain techniques that can help you uh, grow and, and uh, help you that your brand and your product or service is regarded in a very precious and valuable way. Mm -hmm. No, it makes perfect sense. I think it's um, not only the legal aspect of having a trademark and having the little TM behind your company name. There's so much more involved. And we did not even talk about privacy and quantified products. I mean, that would be an episode on its own, I reckon. Um, but this just should give a, a quick overview. And I think you gave a lot of cool nuggets away there, why it is important to have a trademark. Now, before our coffee break comes to an end today, what is a final thought that you want to leave our listeners with? Well, as a final thought, maybe again the importance of of trademarks in today's world. Huh? Uh, if you are uh, at the beginning of, of of your journey, of your business journey, uh, you you are faced with uh, with many with many questions and and uh, challenges, daily challenges uh, that uh, that uh, you need to solve, of course. But sooner or later, sooner or later, you will be faced uh, with some strategic uh, and legal uh, brand uh, challenges. And uh, as, a, as a final thought, I, I would like you to, to embrace uh, those uh, thoughts because you are investing in your business's future. If you are uh, making these thoughts, protecting your brand, and and making sure that, that your brand carries a clear image and uh, and uh, has a, a, a clear vision uh, who who your brand is and where he is moving to so this would mm -hmm. be my final thought yeah very true i have been in contact over the last 20 years 25 years with a couple of trademarks lawyer to protect our assets our name our brand for different businesses and i thought it's always a very important exercise to do so where can people find out more about you 
Well, thank you for that question. Uh, I have a website, which is www.laredo-branding.com, but maybe more easily on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Guido Laredo, and you will easily find me there. I try to be active on that uh, on that uh, platform, and I post uh, uh, about trademarks like once or twice a week. Excellent. I will put the links in the show notes, then you're just one click away. Guido, thank thanks so much, much for giving us thanks so much for giving us an overview. I think it was very insightful. I hope a lot of um, striving businesses uh, will reach out to you and do it the right way. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Carl, and uh, all the best uh, for you and your business as well. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision. But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.